Okay, so uh, Felix asks, uh, when we see a breakdown in a current financial system and fiat currencies of the world are losing value, uh, do you see Ethereum and the benefits of blockchain tech replacing current systems? Um, first of all, I will say that I'm my probability estimation that you know fin world financial systems will collapse and fiat currencies will hyperinflate is much much lower than it was you know four years ago back when I thought that Austrian economics was like the world. Um, but you know. And I, I think you know crypto and blockchains can still have value even in a current context. You know, regardless of whether it's uh, like whether you're dealing with hyperinflation or you know sort of you know low inflation and negative interest rates. Um, I, I mean, but if some kind of major failure mode does happen, then I mean, that I I would say yes, that is good for crypto. And like my general view there is that that's. I mean, there's a couple of things there. Like one of them is that if there is some failure of basically the sort of traditional sort of legal regulatory complex to provide the safety that people expect of it, then there will be increased interest in crypto to provide that safety instead. You know, with you know some combination of mathematical guarantees, security deposits, zero counterparty and risk, and so forth. Then, from a pure kind of asset standpoint, I think the interesting thing with like things like you know Bitcoin and you know Litecoin and so forth is that just generally cryptocurrencies is that even though or even if you assume that nobody uses them for transactions and a, you can actually come up with an economic one model where they retain value and in the very long term their value actually grows at roughly the same rate as you know world gdp per capita or world gdp and you know, people just use them as you know a portion of their of their investment portfolio, even though it's uh, not they don't kind of have any real world use case. And the reason is that basically it's this kind of self reinforced equilibrium argument that if people see that this asset class, you know, number one goes up roughly with world GDP in the long term, and number two, you know, goes sort of has short term ups and downs. On a schedule that's uh, dis, you know, kind of disconnected from the way the schedule on which uh, stocks go up and down, then it'll just become a natural financial strategy to kind of diversify some portion of your of your funds into that in order to re basically reduce risk and kind of protect yourselves for, yourself from market shocks to some degree. And so, if people follow that strategy, then over time, people will keep putting more and more of their money in, into it as world GDP increases, and so. The, you know the prophecy will become kind of self-fulfilling in the long term. So, theoretically, basically, even you know, the you know these things could actually become you know a part of the war of uh, how the world stores its value. Now, there's a question of whether or not that's good or bad for society. I think that I mean, first of all, a lot of the bad for society could be mitigated if the basic proof of work got eliminated and replaced with proof of stake because. You know, proof of, proof of work is, is you know hugely wasteful and environmentally unfriendly in ways the proof of stake isn't. But at the same time, you also have to realize that I think it, you know it might be the case that the world wants assets that kind of behave that way, you know sort of that behave that way and just have value because be, you know that sort of grows with world GDP in the long term and that's uncorrelated with us with the stock market and that the, the market will find assets to serve that function. And if pure assets, to sort of, you know, kind of like crypto assets, say that don't exist, then the market will just find other assets to take on that role instead. And you know, that could be the, the housing market, for example, because land is a fixed supply commodity. And in you could make the case that having that kind of long-term speculative attention moved from things like lands that have secondary uses onto things like basically just crypto, to, you know, Bitcoin could have a benefit because people that wants to use land for its primary function of you know living on it and you know doing and having businesses on it are you know are going to being be able to use to, to use it more cheaply and have uh, potentially have less volatility risk because the speculative interest will be somewhere else okay so we just got a little under 10 minutes left so we'll try and answer the remaining mm -hmm. questions